I'm going to show you a way of using contrast paints to do really quick bases coming up. Welcome back to Mini Junkie everyone. My name is Jarrett and I have discovered my green screen that I had laying around and some free stock photography so I'm getting all cool with the special effects. I may toy with that once in a while or just use the regular backdrop. I'm gonna mix it up for you. In this video, I'm gonna be featuring a couple of miniatures from that were sent to me by a fellow named Tom Greenway. And they're from Moonstone, which is a skirmish game, a fantasy game. Uh, I think it's moonstonethegame.com. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. He sent me some examples, uh, more than just these two actually. Uh, I have assembled a couple. I have not painted them yet and I apologize, Tom. Uh, but I just, it's tough, been tough getting to a lot of, I get actually get sent quite a few different miniatures and, and products and I haven't, haven't been able to get to them all. Um, they're really beautiful miniatures. They're in resin and they're, I don't know how to describe it. They have a kind of fairy tale vibe to the art and to the sculpts. And so you hopefully see that in the, in the footage, but and it's only a couple that I have to show you, but they're really cool and I wanted to give them a shout out. But anyway, the focus of the video is to show you a quick and easy way to do your bases, especially if you're using contrast paints, both for, well, for to do your miniatures. And generally what that means is you're gonna be priming those miniatures white or, you know, gray sear, any of those colors. This this will work regardless of what white type primer or light primer you're using. And the idea is you're going to put the basing on first and you're going to hit that basing with the same primer spray that you're hitting the miniatures with, which speeds things up a lot. And you don't go out, you don't go in after the fact, after you've done all your painting, and then try to apply your base materials. This is, I think, ideal for small warbands or for units, for armies, not necessarily for your display type figures, for sure. You'd want to do, you'd want to do nicer bases for those. All of the recent warbands, I've done three of them on the channel recently, all have used this same method of basing and using contrast paint to do the base. Hey, if you're new here and you're interested in the miniature painting hobby, consider subscribing. I, on the channel, I do a lot of painting, uh, which is all about getting a great looking result easily and quickly and saving time and often saving money. All right, let's look at how I do those bases. So guys, here's a look at the Moonstone miniatures. Just a couple of them that I've put together and cleaned up. Really nice resin. They're in this beautiful sort of fairy tale style. Very appealing. They have gnomes, fairies, goblins. So definitely check them out at Moonstone Game or The Game. I'll, I'll link it down below in the description. We're going to be using that crazy mushroom guy in this tutorial. Uh, I use Vallejo Dark Earth Texture Paste. You can get other kinds like this Desert Sand as an example. But I find the Dark Earth is just the right texture, just the right working consistency. And then as we're doing it, we're going to want some water, a little paper towel, and an old brush. Here's a look at the old brush I'm using. It's not that interesting. And what I tend to do when I'm going to be working on some guys is I take the lid off and I flip it over and set it on top. It's a little messy, but it keeps the pot from drying out, but gives me access to quite a bit of the stuff. And so you can see I take the brush and I just dab it on the surface um, and just spread it around and try not to get it on the miniature's feet. Now, what I will often do is sort of slide the bristles toward, you know, straight towards the feet so that I'm almost tucking the texture under the foot. A little hard to describe, but if you listen to that several times, maybe you'll, you can be able to envision it. I'll take my finger and run it around the rim of the base at just from time to time, just to keep it neat and clean. You don't want to have it drying overlapping because, you know, it just looks messy. Uh, and you just sort of apply it with your brush. You just dab it on. What I'll do is I'll put it on. I'll start to sort of do a stippling motion, a tapping motion. That's going to create all these ridges and bumps and, and just basically enhance the texture that's, that you're applying. If you just spread it on, it'll be a little bit too smooth, I think, and a little unnatural looking. This creates a more natural look. It's great for slotted bases as well. That's what, what this guy's on. You can sort of see a little hole by his foot. This actually does a good job of filling in the slots and... Uh, you know, you can really mold it. You can create different kinds of rises and humps and lumps. And you can also uh, use this to blend various objects like rocks or debris into the base surrounding it. And actually at the same time, it acts as a bit of a glue and holds it down. Now you can't see it here, but from time to time, I will wash the brush out and just kind of dry it on the paper towel before I continue because you don't really want it, you know, it does dry a little bit fast, so you don't want it drying in the bristles and in the ferrule of the brush and wrecking the brush that you're going to want to use once in a while to do this, this process on these bases. 
Here's an example using a Warhammer style base which ha doesn't have that lip. It's really the same idea. You would just blob some on with the brush. I tend to, like I said, I use a brush as opposed to a t um, like one of those GW spatula tools. I just like how the brush allows me to create a lot of interesting textures and to get in around bits of the of the model without getting it all over the model. I find this brush is giving me a little bit more control. And I just apply it. I think my brush is a little wet here, so usually the, the texture paste isn't quite so wet looking. So it'll go on a little thicker and dry faster. Uh, drying time, I want to say it's about like an hour. I, I think I did this and I went and had lunch maybe for an hour, an hour and a half and came back and was ready. And then again, just to keep the base nice and neat looking, you want to run your finger around the edge and wipe off all the excess that's been sort of making its way over the lip. Now I'm going to do this on about four of these blank bases to show you the effect I'm going for. So I tend to airbrush with Vallejo Premium White Primer. Uh, a rattle can will work just as well for this, but I tend to use airbrush when I prime. Now I'm going to show you some footage of priming the miniatures, only because I want you to see what I mean by just basically blasting the whole model and the basing material that we've applied that has since dried. And so it's okay to get that white all, in fact you want to get it all over the base. Now I'm going to grab four different contrast paints from what I have. Gore Grunt of Fur, Wild Wood, Cygore Brown, and Agaros Dunes. Agaros Dunes is what I've been using for the majority of my, well, all my war bands actually. And I, to be honest, I haven't tried these other colors just yet. So you're going to be learning as I do. But basically I just take it out of the pot and, you know, you can imagine that if your miniature's on here, you're just working your way around the feet, just being careful not to get too, too much on there. Uh, just covering the base and so the texture of the paste we applied earlier is is going to act just like a texture would work on a model where there's going to be lighter colors on the raised parts and darker shadows in any of the recessed or little pooling areas and don't worry too much about getting you know messiness on the edge of the base because we clean that up later here's agaros dunes which as i mentioned you've likely seen me use before in my Warcry Warband videos. This is my go-to, I would say. I really like this yellowy-brown uh, color that it gives, and then you'll see how we can sort of brighten up some of that texture later. You just brush it right on, wick up some of the pooling, more for, more for the sense of not wanting to waste too much, as opposed to having dark pools, because in this case we don't mind that much about the pooling. I decided to try Wildwood, even though typically I would use that just for like a wood grain. Uh, and I think most people would, but you know, it works out pretty well as a dark brown base color. So decided to try that out. I think if you're looking for a dark, very dark earth look or mud even, this could work. Gore Grunt of Fur gives a pretty cool reddish brown look. So if you're doing like Martian bases, for example, you could use this color as the basis of that. I think it looks about right. Maybe you might want to mix a little Griff Charger orange in there. I'm not sure, but this worked out pretty well. Pretty interesting look. Here's a look at those four colors after they dried. Feel free to pause the video for a closer look. Now you could definitely use those as is. There may be a little bit lower contrast than, than you might want. If so, you can always dry brush them, which is, you know, a little bit of a finishing step. I tend to use Ushabti Bone, and it looks especially good over the Agaros Dunes, which is, like I said, the color I've been using. So I do dry brush that over after the contrast paint is fully dried, of course, and it gives, you know, pulls out the texture a little bit better. And I, here you see I'm trying it on the, I believe this is the Wildwood, and it just gives a little bit more definition to the to the dirt and I think looks pretty cool as well. In order to mix it up I took some XV88 base color. It's kind of a yellowy sort of a light brown. I thought that would look good on the Gorgrunta which is quite dark and uh, so here you can see the result of that and how it looks. And then for that reddish brown looking sort of Martian surface, I took uh, Jokera or Jokero orange and just dry brushed that over to create that sort of rusty red earth effect. I think it looks pretty good. It doesn't stand out quite as stark as some of the other dry brushing, but it does pull out some of that detail. 
Now we cover up all the messiness on the on the rims of the bases, and we sh you should always paint the rim of your base, by the way. I'm using Army Painter Black. You could use any black or fairly neutral color. You don't want people looking at the edge of your bases. You want people looking at the base and at the miniature. And one tip is use the side of your brush rather than the tip of your brush when you're painting the edge. And that lets you run it all the way around the edge uh, without sort of going over and painting onto the actual base surface. Last optional step is to put on some tufts, but you definitely don't need to. Here's what one of the finished bases looks like, and this is very, very easy to do, as you've seen. Hey, as an aside, this arm is what connects my phone to my painting desk for recording the painting section of my videos. And as you can see, it's very wobbly and shaky and does not hold it nice and stiff. And so when I'm painting, my brush is frequently hitting the... <laughs> hitting the arm mount, so that's where all the shaking comes from in my footage. Just a quick reminder, there's three ways you can support the channel that are on screen here. Go ahead and pause and read, and I won't read it to you every single video, I promise. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video, and I will see you in the next one.